Hello everyone, I'm Sophia, the Small Town Voice. I, I see quite a few new subscribers since yesterday due to my uh, appearance on the Duran. So thank you Duran for inviting me and thank you all for uh, subscribing to my channel and join me. On Thursday evening, President Biden gave a speech to the American public uh, making the case for his request to the Congress for $106 billion foreign aid. As you can see, 61.4 billion goes to Ukraine, 14.3 billion goes to Israel, 14 billion goes to the immigration enforcement, 9.15 billion goes to the humanitarian assistance. I believe both the, the immigration enforcement and the humanitarian assistance goes to the border wall. I think he put there in order to get the Republican support. And then you can see 4 billion goes to countering China's influence in developing countries in Indo-Pacific. At least part of that will go to Taiwan to buy U.S. weapons. And the last one is a 3.4 billion uh, submarine industry base, which is at least partially going to uh, counter China as well. So exactly how is the China-U.S. relationship right now? Earlier this year, the U.S. ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns, spoke at an event at the American Chamber of Commerce on February 27th. And this morning, a commentator that I normally follow commented on this speech. For some reason, it took him a few months. Um, but in any event, if you look at both those footages, uh, it, it will give you an idea about the current state of the relationship between US and China. One of the great advantages we have right now in dealing with a very difficult uh, government here in the People's Republic of China in a competitive relationship is that we have large-scale bipartisan agreement that we ought to be competing with China. Uh, for military power in the Indo-Pacific, competing in the, in the economic and trade sphere for a much more level playing field for American business, because it's not level right now. We're certainly competing on technology. And of course, we defend our, our values. We defend human rights. We take issue, great issues that the Chinese have done in Xinjiang and Tibet and Hong Kong, the lack of religious freedom here. And I think there's large scale agreement, frankly, uh, in our country, and also uh, between Republicans and Democrats in Congress, that we've got to be competing in those four areas. We're now in this surreal moment where the Chinese, who I think you know lost the debate over the balloon uh, globally, lost influence and credibility around the world because of what they have done, they're now blaming this on us. It's a little bit Orwellian, and it's a little bit frustrating because I think everybody knows the truth here. Yes, there are issues where we do want to work with China if we can, but frankly, this is a moment where we've got to manage these differences, hold China to account, and build up our alliance system out here in the Indo-Pacific, which has been so effective. Frankly, I think the Chinese may have been surprised by the strength of all of our democracies. I remember when I testified at my confirmation hearing, I told the members of the Foreign uh, Affairs Committee, Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate, you know, that the Chinese believe, the Chinese leadership, that the East is rising and that the West, particularly the United States, was declining. I think two years into this administration and on a bipartisan basis, I can say the United States is a strength and position in the Indo-Pacific and now the United States and NATO and the United States and, Euro and the European Union are beginning to see the threat from China and the competition from China in the same way. I think that surprised the Chinese. It strengthened our ability to make sure that we're defending our interests out here. From my perspective, sitting here in China, looking out at the Indo-Pacific, our American position is stronger than it was five or 10 years ago. It's the strength of our alliances it's the strength of our private sector. It's our innovative capacity and our R&D capacity, which comes from our research institutions and our big tech companies. And I do think that the Chinese now understand that the United States is staying in this region. We're, we're the leader in this region in many ways, and that we want a future of peace with China. We don't want, as the President Biden makes clear every time he talks about this, we don't want conflict, but we're going to hold our own out here. And I feel optimistic, I'm just concluding my first year as ambassador, about the American position in this country and in this region. Now, let's have a look at the jump in the commentator, uh, his comment on Nicholas Burns' speech. 
这话你要听起来吧，真没什么毛病，而且呢，说的还是挺缓和啊，都是讲的和平啊，谈的都是和平。实际上，你要真看明白了之后，你就发现这段话呀，可以说是杀气腾腾的。来，我们看其中有几层意思啊。这第一，伯恩斯呢，他就强调了美国的强大和先进，这种强大呢，呃，之一是来源于他的同盟关系，第二呢，也是来源于美国的创新，掌握着最先进的科技。你这话说的吧，他。倒也是事实啊！科技霸权是美国霸权体系中重要的支柱啊！科技霸权和军事霸权以及经济霸权这之间的关系是密不可分的。第二呢，美国现在在亚洲是领导地位啊，未来我美国也要是，所以中国呢要服从美国的领导权。美国不是经常在说什么规则呀、秩序呀，其实讲的就是这么个意思。第三呢，美国是要和平的，不想要冲突的。哎。这话说的挺好啊，其实真正的狠话就在这一句。为什么这么说呢？这个美国所说的和平啊，它是有前提的，就是中国呀要在服从美国领导下的那个和平相处。中国不能冲击美国的霸权利益，要接受美国的政治啊、安全啊、经济啊、科技啊等各个方面的安排，包括产业链上的安排。比如说，你想冲击美国的高科技产业，你想搞这个高精密的这个芯片，那不行，我就得把你围死。唯独唯独你没有什么理由了。你反正发展的科技方面，比如说你大数据，呃，你的这个互联网的这个科技方面，我能围死你就围死你，围得死围不死是一回事儿，反正我这事儿坚决要把你围住，啊。那么美国要是做出这么一种安排，对我们中国就意味着什么呢？那就是我们要向美国去交投名状啊。你比如说，我们得放弃这个二零二五中国制造，放弃高科技产业，放弃“一带一路”啊，不能去统一台湾等等等等。总之，你要按照美国嘴里常说的那个所谓秩序和规则来办事。如果你中国不办，怎么办呢？你想冲击我啊？你把我赶走，那就是你来挑起冲突、挑起战争啊！美国会保持现在的立场和地位，这话它不是空话哈、啊。保持这个地位，那就要各种手段都会上，包括战争手段。所以我们看这些啊，美国现在一系列的各种做法，像伯恩斯这个话说的，真都是一道明处了。他把这个对抗、遏制中国呀，已经放到了民族、种族对决的这个层面。超过了什么政治啊、军事啊、经济这个层面了、啊。我们想要避免这么一场战争的话啊，唯一能做的只有自强。还有啊，就是不能按照美国的这个霸权逻辑去行事。我给你硬刚，我给你搞这个对抗，我们不这么干。美国呢，它奉行的是一种零和的伦理，它所有的办事逻辑都是一种零和的啊，这么一个伦理支撑下的逻辑。我们呢，我们的逻辑是什么？是共处啊，我们是。坚持共处，我们也也追求和平，但是我们追求的这个和平是彼此平等的和平，这需要什么？这就需要自身的实力。I agree with him. I I do get the feeling that Nicholas Burns is almost like a warning to China that we are here to stay and we will continue to dominate the Asia. If you dare to challenge us, um, it's going to be war. That's my interpretation. What Nicholas Burns was saying. And the dumping is a pretty representative of China's attitude. Is、uh, we are not going to confront you the way you expect us to. We believe in coexistence. We believe when when we are we don't believe in zero sum game. That's very much China's attitude. Once upon a time, diplomats are supposed to be diplomatic.、Um, that seems changed nowadays. The diplomats are more hawkish than sometimes the generals.、Uh, we will see. That's all for now. And if you like my program, please、uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comment section if there's some topic you want me to cover. Thank you.